All right, guys. Our next guest is currently on a three-fight win streak and is set to take on Mark De La Rosa at UFC China, straight out of the notorious city kickboxing gym in Auckland, New Zealand. Kai, don't blink. Cara France, welcome to Submission Radio. How are you today, man? It, it looks like you're at the gym right now. Yeah, I just finished um, a pad session with Eugene. Um, yeah, good to talk to you guys again. It's been a while. Okay, we have to get into the important questions straight away. We know that Dan Hooker has the Dan Hooker mobile, his Isuzu Ute, but it looks like you've got yourself a car. Team Don't Blink is written on it. You got to give us a story there. Is there is there a special vehicle that you've been driving around town in? Yeah, I got a new car, a new sponsor, um, Hyundai. Ooh. So um, it's awesome to see you know mainstream um, brands like that jump on board, seeing the potential and the. Um, and uh, the exposure the UFC is getting right now and, and using me as a platform. So, yeah, I'm happy to have them on board and, um, yeah, get my own car with my own uh, signature to team don't blink on the side. So, yeah, couldn't be happier and, um, yeah, just loving it. Yeah, this is sick. And I love how Dan Hooker's car is black and then yours is white. Is it safe <laughs> to say you guys are like uh, the Paul Walker and uh, Vin Diesel <laughs> of uh, City Kickboxing? Is that 100% accurate? Yeah, pretty much. I might have to shave my hair today just uh, – <laughs> look the part but um yeah no no we um it's been fun though um it's cool to have him his car uh, like i've taken his his approach at um getting sponsors and just using it that as a blueprint and he's really good at you know marketing himself the right way um <clears throat> so i've taken that approach and um yeah it, it worked out so yeah we do 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 a few uh races together and um <laughs> you know he's got a slower car so i always <laughs> Well, wow, who, who, there you who, go. Who's, who's there the you Paul, go. Sorry to cut in. Who's the Paul Walker and who's the Vin Diesel when you when you guys do race? Oh, he's he's definitely he looks more like Paul Walker, so I'll, yeah. I'll give it to him. Yeah. I'm Vin Diesel. Uh, it's really it's really about who's Ja Rule, right? Because that's that's the main <laughs> character from the first one. That's the one with the big promises, you know. The ladies they they made some promises, <laughs> then he gets nothing unbelievable. Also, the guy playing the PlayStation One. And inside his car, which was revolutionary at the time. I remember thinking, man, anything's possible when I saw that. Now, speaking about your UFC run, we have to talk to you about your UFC, UFC debut in Adelaide. Now that you've been in the UFC for a good eight months, how's life changed for you apart from the car since being in the company and putting the sort of win streak together? Are you noticing any changes? Yeah, um, do you guys say three fight win streak? I think I'm on a seven fight win streak. Sorry, three no, fight, said... three, three fight, <laughs> three fight win streak in the UFC. But I think I think two it's obviously I think it's a lot a lot larger in uh, in obviously the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It no, all yeah, counts. No, um, it counts. no you, um, my life really hasn't changed too much. You know, I've, I I want to keep my head down and just keep working. I've had a little bit of time off. It's been what six months since my last fight in Melbourne mm -hmm. earlier this year. So um, I've taken time to kind of. Just work on um, my whole my whole game, you know, upskilling everything. Um, and then now we've had at least what, seven weeks since I um, signed my contract for this fight. So I'm in, um, you know, we've only got a few weeks left. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready um, to fight. I could go this weekend. So outside of fighting, what has changed? Um, no, not, nothing really too much. Um, I haven't spent all my bonus money, which is a good thing, I guess. And that was the bonus from the first win, right? In, in the UFC in Adelaide? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bonus um, in Adelaide. Um, just kind of put that into savings and um, haven't really touched that, which is um, which is a good thing. I, um, I don't want to um, just, you know, blow it all on stupid things. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so not, not, nothing too much has changed. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back in there. Um, you know, ideally, if I'm not injured, I want to fight in Melbourne as well if it's not if the card's not full, um, I know that's a bit ambitious, and I'm not not looking past Mark De La Rosa at all. Um, I just like to, um, you know, set goals, and I plan on reaching them. See, that's crazy, but also inspirational, because that was going to be the next question, sort of what did you think when the card was announced for Melbourne? And sort of as far as taking this fight, when they offered it to you, were you at all thinking like, I don't know, man, like there might be a Melbourne card, maybe I'll hold out? What sort of went into into taking this one and, and you know, not sticking around for the Melbourne one? Yeah, well, like at the time, I was like, the, Melbourne's quite far away, you know, it was mm. over three months away, so I didn't want to just sit, sit around and wait, so... I was like, I told Eugene, he's like, bro, you can probably do both if you want to do it. And I was like, yeah, why not? If I'm, if I'm fit to go and my body's holding up, um, 
yeah, let's do it. So that's why I signed for, for China. Obviously, I've got a good um, track record over there. I fought over there maybe seven times now. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the crowd knows, uh, the, the fan base know me over there. So I should get a good reception. Um, so, yeah, but that, that was kind of my, my method behind that, fighting in China. Um, when they when they gave me Mark De La Rosa, was, you know, it's a good name. He said he's fought some good guys, two and two in the UFC. Um so, you know, he, he is dangerous, um, but we're we're working on a game plan right now. And, um, yeah, we've seen stuff that um, we can try to exploit and, yeah, feeling good for it. So get past Mark and then just get a quick turnaround and then pretty much stay back in camp and then fight on Melbourne. So that that's probably – that's how I see it. And then hopefully they come back to Auckland at the end of this year. Mm. Um, I remember we were talking about this last time. Um, but, yeah, I feel like they, they will come back eventually. And um, – I would love to be on that card as well. So um, hopefully it'll be a busy end to the year for me. Mm, yeah, it sounds exciting. And I mean, through your career, do you find that you feel better with sort of shorter turnarounds when you're already sort of in shape if you can rattle off a few fights back to back? I mean, barring having injuries or, or massive wars, if you're able to get through China relatively unscathed, do you feel like, do you enjoy that being in shape and then just sort of rattling off a few fights back to back? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a lot easier to stay fit than to, you know, get fit over a 10-week period. Mm. Um, you know, I can't, lo- I won't lose too much and I won't put on too much in, in a week if, um, you know, I take a few days off. So I- I'd love to straight jump back straight back into camp. I know the gym will be booming with, um, you know, Israel obviously fighting Rob Whitaker. Hopefully Dan's getting on there and maybe, um, you know, one, one more of the boys will hopefully get on the card. So, yeah, the gym will be pumping and it won't be too much for me to just jump back straight into um, the tra- training regime and then continue on working. So, yeah, but the, most of the work is kind of done now already for, for China. So it's just fine-tuning, uh, doing that little bit more weight cutting. Um, I'm a lot skinnier, coming in a lot lighter. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all kind of fallen into place quite nicely. Mm. And you mentioned Israel, and I love watching some of your uh, Instagram posts around city kickboxing. You and him have a pretty cool relationship. I see you guys go out for coffees after training and like to hang out. Take us into that world. Like when you guys are done with training, what are some of the things you guys like to do together? I saw you just sitting around coffee shops, hanging out. What What are some of the things behind the scenes that fans didn't really get to see? Yeah, so like if you if you come to our gym on a you know on a normal day. We don't just train, you know, once a day. We've got about three or four sessions wow. uh, split up throughout the whole day. So when we're getting coffee, it's not after training. It's usually before, before the next session. So there's um, we're, we're we're lucky enough to have a scooter sponsor. Me, me and Izzy. Huh. So they gave us um, some e-scooters to to drive. They go pretty quick as well. So I've got to be. I, I'm I'm pretty good. I can. I'm pretty agile, and I you know I've been on a scooter a lot, and I do a bit of mountain biking so i know what it's like to be you know on a two wheel go going down a hill fast but as how, well, how quick you know, how quick are we talking a little bit bigger what's that how quick are we talking speed wise oh they can go up to about 50 kilometers <laughs> wow so not not yeah they're like they can go so when i'm on there with um israel or when, when we're both going together down to the get a coffee and then we go to our strength session you know it's um He's he's pretty good on a scooter. Obviously, he doesn't go too quick, and he's he's not you know being an idiot. But um, he's a lot bigger than me, so like you do worry like there's a lot of there's a lot of body on that scooter, and if it comes <laughs> off, you know, it could look bad. But um, no, no, it's been a fun little um, thing we do after our morning training. We uh, scooter down and go get a coffee, and then we because uh, our other strength gym's not too far from our city kickboxing, so. It's it's nice to kind of break up the environment and and the atmosphere and and the change of scenery, and then um and then we come back in the evening for um either sparring or wrestling at our city kickboxing. So that's usually usually our, our training schedule. It's pretty full on. Seven days a mm. week we train. Um, like I gave you guys an insight last time we spoke about like how how much we actually do train at city kickboxing. Yeah. And you see it you see it in our fights. We're always coming in pretty conditioned. Um, we can push the pace. Which um, is a, um, it's 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 reassuring knowing that in a fight you, you won't ever get tired. So that's why we pride ourselves always um, ten week camps. You know, putting everything into it and uh, leaving no stone unturned. Mm. 
And I know you train through Christmas and stuff like that, but I was going <laughs> to say, you mentioned before, four training sessions in one day sometimes. Is that right? How would that look like? That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's um, just normal for us, you know. Not all Whoa. of those sessions wow. are quite hard. Mm. Um, what would it look like, for example, a full a four, a four training session in a, in a day? What, what would that look like? Um, so in the morning at 9 a.m., we do like... Um, it's like uh, it's one of our conditionings that we do is um, get called uh, lactic capacity or lactic capacity or like a VO2 max, which is like pretty much going as hard as you can for a certain amount of time and then having like a set period of rest. So you're just exerting as, as much energy as you can and then recovering as fast as you can. So that's it. That's our 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. class. And then 10 a.m. to 11, we got um, either drilling or technique class. So we're either going live and like... Um, positional stuff or we're working on you know tech um technical um situations and then at like 12 i've got a we do our strength session so i only live twice a week tuesday thursday so that's on the tuesday thursday is when i'm doing the four sessions um we do um just lifting working around sports specific kind of movements not lifting necessarily like crazy heavy but obviously um enough to to feel it and then um in that evening we've got either wrestling that night or um like a drilling um stand-up session or either sparring so it could be one of those things it, it just depends on the day but mm. that's usually my day so then in between all those sometimes i'll go to the physio um or just do like a yoga class so it gets pretty full on and you've got to listen to your body so if, if you're overtrained or you're feeling um a bit run down then um, you, you won't be doing all those sessions. You'll just be doing like one or two of them. Um, but if you're feeling good to go, then you kind of just do all of them and jump on board. Mm. And, and um, yeah, that, that's kind of how I, I like to over, over, I guess not over train, but I like to make sure that I'm ticking all the boxes. So when it does come down to fight week, I know that I've put everything into it. Mm. And um, that just gives me reassurance knowing that, you know, I've done everything I can. And, and now the, the rest is you know, just going in there and fighting. So mm. that, that's kind of how my fight camps are. I'm just curious, just on that as well, uh, what, what what's the sparring schedule look like for you guys at City Kickboxing? How many times a week would you say on average would you be doing it sort of going into a fight? Uh, just twice a week. So Monday Monday nights we spar and Saturday morning. So, so yeah, mm. we don't – it's all um, – so, like, we, we don't spar hard like crazy hard we it's all um time and place kind of thing if you've got a fight coming up we do put you through um you know shorter rest periods and, and more fresh guys coming coming towards you and um that just gives you more of a realistic um pace of how the fight's going to be um but you know most of the time it's it's mostly technique sparring so we're not hitting hard we're just trying to be accurate and um and more um, giving the look that we need to um, for our opponent and whatnot. So, yeah, it's not always hard sparring. I know you had a, a bit of a hand injury sort of coming off your last fight. I wanted to know sort of what the update there was. But also, just sort of on the lifting, I saw a training montage of you, and uh, you were doing a deadlift, and I saw a hashtag 200 club, and it looked like there was a lot of weight on that bar. How much were you deadlifting there? Was that 200 kilos? Yeah. Yeah, I was deadlifting 200. Jesus kilos. Christ! And yeah, <laughs> how does it is, is that the most you've ever lifted, or? Yeah, I think 205 is the most I've wow. ever deadlifted. Um, I wasn't obviously sitting at flyweight then. I was probably about 68, mm -hmm. so I was a little bit heavier, but still, um, it's just something that we work on um, a bit with my strength and conditioning coach um, Suns. Mm -hmm. um, he trains a lot of high high profile athletes, so he, his his method isn't. But, um, solely combat sports he just tries to make you as, as most athletic and as much um, powerful as you can be mm. so he works with a lot of um, like you know high level soccer players rugby players um, and, and combat athletes so he's a great addition to our program and um, yeah he's, he's been um, a, a good help obviously in those um, wrestling exchanges if you can pop up if you can lift 200 kgs when you're lifting someone that's 57 yeah. it's, a, it's a lot easier <laughs> so yeah that's um what, uh, what was the second part to your question? Just your hand. How's the hand feeling? I imagine if oh, you're lifting 200 hand. yeah, kilos, no, the hand's pretty good, right? Yeah, no, the hand's healed up quite nicely. Um, 
yeah, it, t- it took a little while after my Melbourne fight earlier this year to kind of heal. Mm. Um, I came back to training a little bit too early, and then uh, it just wasn't healing. So I just had to rest it for um, like a month and a half and no, no contact, not even lifting anything, just because anything kind of was agitating it. Mm. Um, it wasn't it wasn't broken or fractured. It was just uh, a, a big sprain and no no torn ligaments, which is uh, nice to hear. But um, yeah, now now it's full strength. I can throw, you know, without um, any discomfort or um, any swelling after training. So that it's nice to know that um, going leading into a fight, you can use both weapons, both your right and left hand. Um, and I feel like that that did hinder my performance, not taking it any way from my opponent, Piva. But I pretty much heard it on the second punch that I threw. Um, and oh, that, wow. that's why you didn't see me kind of pressuring like I usually do in fights, just because I was throwing it right. Um, I was still throwing my right hand, but it, it was hurting, um, and it didn't have that sting that it usually has on on on, on my opponents. You could tell by the way I was uh, turning my elbow after I threw my punch. When I lock, I usually would lock it out, you know, and it'd be full strength, but I just couldn't. It just hurt too much. So, mm. um, it's something in this next fight that um, you'll see a lot more, and uh, I'll be a lot more comfortable knowing that um, you know I'm not coming in with any injuries, and um, I'm, I'm full strength and ready to go. Mm. And Kai, we want to get your thoughts on a couple of other things in your division. The first of which, you know, one of the greatest to ever do it, Demetrius Johnson fought last weekend at one. I'm just wondering, did you get a chance to see his fight? Because a lot of people were surprised. He had a lot of problems in that fight. He didn't really dominate like many people thought he would. I'm just wondering if you got a chance to watch it and your thoughts on his performance. Yeah, so I actually fought his opponent in Risen, uh, Water. I, I fought him back in 2016, so mm-hmm. I know, I know he's legit, and he, he gave me troubles. Obviously, I lost to him. Um, with them fighting in a ring, that definitely works for the Japanese, uh, just because they're so used to that. Mm-hmm. That takes away, you know, that cage control. You can't really rush them, rush and hit a takedown, just because you get caught up in the ropes. Um, and yeah, Demetrius did well by. I did watch the fight. He did well with. Um, countering that calf kick it's quite a big trend in the japanese um right now where they they love hitting calf kicks and uh he hit me with a few and i you know i, I knew what it felt like mm. so um demetrius did well by countering that by catching it and, and setting up his takedowns um but yeah i knew i knew it was going to be a closer fight than people expected and um yeah no he did the japanese did well um but yeah you could see D, dj's experience in that in that situation and He's definitely um, on his way to winning that one FC belt, another one to add to the collection. Mm. It's fun watching that Grand Prix and also seeing guys like him and Eddie Alvarez sort of, you know, the way they do over in a different promotion. Just sort of on you and obviously the flyweight division, it wasn't that long ago, like even in Melbourne, we all kind of expected the flyweight division to be going away at some point. Now you got a guy mm. like Mark De La Rosa, he's going down from bantamweight to flyweight, yeah. something a lot of people sort of didn't expect. I guess, how do you view the flyweight division as far as what you know? Uh, as far as where where its future is going, and also how does that work as far as your goals go? I imagine it's kind of tough when you sort of should theoretically have this goal of I'm going to win this belt from this guy, and you don't really have that certainty. Yeah, I feel like we're in a better position that we were in um, earlier this year for the flyweight division mm-hmm. with Henry winning um, winning against uh, winning the bantamweight title. I, I remember Dana saying, you know, that the fly are here to stay now. Um, just, just, what, 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 what did you think of him saying? Sorry to interrupt you. What did you think? Because when he said it, it seemed so like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it's confirmed. It seems so like half-hearted. Like, I, I imagine as a flyaway, you would have watched that and been like, well, is it official? Are they officially staying around? Yeah, like I, I was ready to go to bantamweight. Like, that's why um, I was lifting heavy because I was like, I'm going to put on some size to, mm. to compete with that bantamweight because um, I just was assumed that that was what was going to happen mm-hmm. um but no i was relieved and i was happy that they they kept the division and and it's n- my natural size is to be a flyweight um so you know i i was happy with it and um it's good to see them re-signing a few guys that they've let go like brandon moreno he he's got a fight coming up um i saw that tim Elliott has a fight as well or potentially has a fight against maybe uh Figueroa. The guy that just beat Alexander Pantoja. That was mm-hmm. a great fight. Yeah, I feel like it's a good thing right now. Um, in the weekend match, now won against um, was it who was it Espinosa by um, triangle, his second triangle in a row, and then got the uh, performance bonus. 
Um, oh, two weeks ago, when Alexander Pantoja uh, fought uh, Figueroa, they both got fired the night. I remember Joseph Benavides getting a fight of the night bonus um, on his last fight. So, you know, the flyweights are putting on fights, you know. We're not just doing it. Um, we're not, you know, we're not just here to, to get the win. We're, we're trying to be exciting. And, and the UFC are taking note of that by giving us us uh, giving us bonuses, being me being a part of that for my debut fight. So I feel like that's, there's, not more, there's not much we can do besides just put on exciting fights and just keep showing the world that... Um, you know, just because we're the lighter weight class doesn't mean we're we're exciting and we're not skillful. Because there's not many guys in our weight division. There's what 16, if that. Mm-hmm. So all the matchups you make, they're going to be close and they're going to be even. And I don't know if this is my last fight in the in, in the UFC. So that's why I just got to go out there and leave it all out there. So that's why I train so hard leading up to these fights because nothing's guaranteed. Um, I've known that right from the start. In my debut, people are saying, you know, this this is probably your last fight, win or lose. Um, and I haven't even, been, haven't even fought in the UFC yet. So um, having that weight on my shoulders just kind of didn't, it didn't add pressure. It just made me want to perform um, even even better and even um, just made me a lot more hungrier because i got something to prove, not just want to fight. So, um, yeah, going into this next fight, I'm just going to do what I always do and not, not overthink it and just um, showcase all my skills and uh, – Come in the best prepared I can. When you say last fight in the UFC, what do you mean? You mean last fight in the UFC as a flyweight, uh, and then moving into bantamweight, right? Not just the last fight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. The, like at the at, at that time earlier this year, people were getting cut after losing one fight. You know, right. You saw yeah, that yeah. after Ben Wen, um, Dustin Ortiz, mm. Brandon Moreno. They they are only coming off one fight lose streaks, and then they were getting cut. So um, that that's what I meant by. Um, not knowing, um, you know, what was going to happen with, with my career. But, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm glad to still have a job and still still keep fighting. And I, I want to make, uh, you know, add to the flow at division and, and keep us around. Mm, absolutely. You're very modest, Kai. I mean, come on, your performances have been great. You're bringing excitement to the division. So many Kiwis excited to see you guys fight down over there in New Zealand at the end of the year. As we wrap up, I want to get a pair of predictions from you. First of which, we know your teammate Israel Adesanya has got the big matchup with Robert Whitaker here in Melbourne. We're hoping you're going to be on that card, but for now, what's your prediction for that Israel Adesanya Robert Whitaker fight? It's a tough one to predict. Obviously, we imagine you'd be going with Israel, but how do you see that one going? Yeah, it's going to be an amazing fight. You know, both both the, um, at the top of their careers right now, you know, they're they're coming in with so much, um, mm-hmm. so much hype around both fighters, and um, it's just going to be a stylistic matchup. Um, Israel's obviously going to keep it standing, but he he's he's working on everything. You know, he's not just um, he's not just working on kickboxing. You know, he wrestles every day, um, working on his jiu-jitsu every day, working on countering. Um, and I know Robert's been training for this for a long time, so he he's motivated and. Um, I just can't wait for it, you know, just not even just as a fighter, just as a fan of um, both guys. It's going to be an amazing showcase having a, a 60,000 plus arena um, full of people, full of, um, you know, they're your fellow countrymen, mm-hmm. um, the Kiwis and, and Aussies all getting behind. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I can't really wait for it. I, obviously, I'm going to be back in Israel because, uh, yeah, he's, he's one of my, my boys, but yeah, it's going to be a great, great fight, and I'd, I'd love if not if I'm not on the um, backstage watching it, getting ready for my fight, or hadn't just fought. Um, I'd love to be in the crowd um, supporting. So yeah, I can't mm. wait for it. For sure, and and just quickly, obviously, we got to get the prediction for your fight when you take on Mark De La Rosa at UFC China on August thirty first. Uh, how how I see this fight going? Yeah. Yeah, I I feel like. Um, so since Mark's coming off a loss against Alex Perez, he's going to be hungry. He's going to, you know, he's going to try take authority straight away, and and um, I feel like he's going to try push me against the cage and try grind me. Uh, but uh, yeah, we work in everything, so uh, I'm I'm waiting for him to kind of come in. If if he doesn't come in, then I'm going to take it to him as well. So we're ready for kind of whatever game plan he's got coming. Um, but I feel like I'm going to put the pace on him quickly um, and then kind of just let my let everything go, 
feel it out straight away, but feel nice and relaxed. And um, yeah, if I see a finish, I'll just take it. So um, I feel like I will get a finish this fight, but I uh, just don't know what's around. Uh, I'm not going to force anything. I'm uh, just going to kind of let it happen naturally. Um, so yeah, I feel like I will get a finish, just don't know which, which round. Mm. Well, guys, when it comes to August 31st or the 1st of September in Australia, New Zealand on ESPN Plus or ESPN, don't blink because Kai Kai France takes on Mark De La Rose at UFC China. Obviously, very excited for that. Excited to possibly see you down in Melbourne. One of the most exciting prospects in the division. Follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Kai Kai France. Kai, we look forward to potentially seeing you in your Kai Kai France mobile sometime soon. <laughs> Good luck in China. Enjoy yourself. And hopefully we see you down here in Melbourne. Awesome, boys. Thanks for having me again. And uh, take care, boys. Thank you. Pleasure's ours. Thanks, Kai. Bye.